Modeling is hard, but Blender just announced that they're working on three new modeling systems that could change that. They each have different strengths and weaknesses. So by the end of this video, you'll understand what each system does, why it's special, and how it's going to change Blender. Now, don't worry, this isn't going to replace mesh modeling, but rather the idea is to go beyond the mesh with entirely new systems. So what specifically is this going to look like? Well, based on this presentation at BlenderCon, they're looking at implementing SDF, Gaussian splatting, and NURBS. Three very powerful techniques that are widely used in the industry but aren't meaningfully implemented into Blender because Blender technically already has NURBS. So today we'll explore each of these so that you understand how they work and you'll be ready to use them once they're implemented. Let's start with SDF modeling. This approach is entirely different from mesh modeling. You don't even have topology anymore. Instead of building your world from vertices, you use SDFs or sign distance functions. Let's take one minute to look under the hood at how SDFs work, so then we can understand why they're so special. SDF modeling represents 3D objects mathematically. Each point in space has a value indicating the distance between it and the closest object. It's called a signed distance function rather than just a distance function because the sign is positive if the point is outside the nearest object and negative if it's inside. Just like metaballs, which are already inside of Blender, SDF models are set to merge once the distance between the point and the object is small enough and it meets a predefined threshold. This leads to a modeling system that is much more intuitive because we're working with volumes instead of wireframes. And since SDF is a volume-based workflow, it allows you to use Boolean functions like union, subtraction, and intersection as well. With these Boolean functions, you're essentially able to use SDF models like clay, adding volumes, subtracting areas, and finding the intersection in between them. As you can imagine, the system is really good at building hard surfaces and is decent at building some organic structures like rocks and tree trunks too. You can actually try out this technology right now inside of Blender using an add-on called Conjure SDF, but it is a paid add-on. So if you want to try SDF for free, you can use the online application WAMP. I believe you have to pay for the full functionality inside of WAMP. Some features are locked when you're just using it for free, but you can at least test it out, see how SDF works. So what makes SDF special. Why is this exciting? Well, there are four main reasons. First is just the ease of use. If you've spent much time doing mesh modeling, you know exactly how frustrating it can be, especially if you're new and don't have a ton of experience. And while you still need a comprehensive technical skill set to use SDF modeling, it's much more intuitive. One of the main reasons why it's easier is the second point, no topology. You don't have to worry about mesh structure and flow, which makes it easier to work with complex objects without running into any roadblocks, which leads into the third reason. It's non-destructive. If you've used Booleans much in your workflow, you know how powerful they can be. One of the main reasons why they're so powerful is that they're non-destructive as long as they're not applied, but they also leave awful topology once you apply them. So with SDF modeling, you essentially get the best of both worlds. You get the modular, non-destructive workflow but you also don't have the topology issues. Finally, because SDF modeling uses mathematical functions instead of geometry, curved surfaces are more precise, meaning you don't have to crank up your subdivisions to get a good result. So that's a pretty cursory, basic look at SDF. If you wanna go more in depth, I'll leave a link to a video that explains all the nitty gritty detail in the description. But if you decide to try it out and use WAMP or another web-based app for modeling or other purposes, there are some risks that go along with that. But that's where today's sponsor, CyberGhost, comes in. We all know that browsing the internet can put us at risk, but CyberGhost VPN can fix that. It's one of the best VPN services that encrypts your information and protects you while you browse the internet safely. With over 38 million users worldwide and an excellent rating on Trustpilot, CyberGhost VPN is one of the most recommended services on the market. Your internet provider, public Wi-Fi, or even websites can track what you do online. But with CyberGhost VPN, all your traffic is encrypted and your IP address is hidden, keeping you completely anonymous. Plus, you can use CyberGhost VPN on up to seven devices at the same time, be it your phone, computer, tablet, smart TV, or gaming console, and share it with your family and friends as well. CyberGhost VPN allows you to unblock content from 40 streaming platforms like Netflix, Amazon Prime, and more in other countries, so that you can change your location in a couple clicks and enjoy geographically locked content. In addition, CyberGhost offers a 45-day money-back guarantee, so it's totally risk-free, along with an 84% discount and four months free if you use my link in the description, which is an amazing opportunity to protect your privacy and enjoy unlimited content. So don't wait any longer. Click the link in the description and start browsing safely with CyberGhost VPN. Now let's get back to the video. Second, let's look at Gaussian splatting. 
thing. This one's really interesting, and I wouldn't even call it a modeling technique. Instead, it's almost like photogrammetry on steroids while it's also tripping on acid. Before starting work on this video, I'd heard of Gaussian splatting, but I didn't understand how accessible it was. So I tried it for myself, following this tutorial by Default Cube that I'll link in the description. It was surprisingly straightforward. You basically just record a video or take a series of images. The more frames and the higher their quality, the better it'll turn out. Then you input that data into a program. I personally use PostShot by Jawset and it'll create your rough splat. Then you can go through and clean it up, create your camera animation and render it out. But right now there is no official way to import that data into Blender. There are a couple of add-ons that you can use that sort of create these shortcuts that sort of bring it into Blender, but if you actually want the highest quality and the best performance, it's just best to render it inside a post shot. So what is Gaussian splatting? How does it work? and why is it special? First of all, if you want a super technical, more comprehensive explanation, I'll leave a link to a video that does that in the description. I'm just not gonna get into all of those details in this video, because I don't want it to be too convoluted. So essentially, whenever you input your data set, which could be a set of images or a video, the software extracts the best photos, then tracks where the camera was in 3D space when the image was taken. Then based on this information, it can create a point cloud that represents the objects in your data set. This is the same tech we've seen in photogrammetry for years. It essentially just looks at the parallax difference between the different pictures, and then it can create the structure of the objects from there. But Gaussian splatting takes it a step further. It takes each point in that cloud and then adds blur to it. Then that blurry point can be rotated, stretched, or have its opacity adjusted to represent the scene. So why is that any better than photo scanning? Well, it's not necessarily better, but it is different. One of the main advantages of using this method is variable reflections. If you photo scan an object, that texture data is baked in. You can try to relight the model, but there's only so much you can do. With splatting, the texture will change based on the angle you view it at, meaning you can get much more realistic results with way less effort. If you want to try it out for yourself, it's really easy to do, or at least this tutorial was so good that it made it easy. It's linked down in the description below. Finally, the third method is NURBS, which stands for Non-Uniform Rational Beast Blinds. This is a very common technique used in manufacturing and product design, which is why it's really common in a lot of CAD software. Software, but it's also in 3ds Max, Maya, and some other Blender competitors as well. Blender technically already has NURBS, but its implementation is very limited. So how does it work and what is it good for? Well, just like SDF, NURBS is based on math. You essentially build out a control polygon, then Blender runs a math function that creates a B-spline, which is basically like a curve. It kind of reminds me of modeling with a subsurf modifier that has infinite resolution but maybe that just shows how inexperienced I am with it. With NURBS, you can choose how closely you want the B-spline to match the control polygon, so it does give you some control. So what's it used for in the industry, and how could it be useful to 3D artists? Well, like I mentioned earlier, it's widely used in CAD software, where you need extreme precision. But that's also its biggest weakness. For artistic renders and visual effects, you don't need extremely precise models because you aren't going to be sending that 3D model into production. And that extreme level of precision also slows down NURBS a lot. It doesn't work very well in real time. So then why is Blender considering adding NURBS? Well, it's really good for product visualization, for objects that are gonna be really close up and have a lot of precise details. It's also great at modeling cars and planes, things with sinuous flow. And it's also good for modeling things that are gonna be 3D printed because you have that precision. Ultimately, none of these different modeling systems are going to replace mesh modeling. Rather, they give Blender users an alternative, another system to be able to use, explore, and improve their workflow. Don't forget to use my link in the description to get the special discount CyberGhost VPN is offering to you. It'll protect your data while you browse and give you full access to blocked content on the internet for only $2.03 a month. It's risk-free, so check it out, link in the description. And thank you for watching.